I'm at Ab Week Europe in London with Simon Daglish, who is the Group Commercial Director at ITV. Simon, thanks for joining me. Good morning. Now, you've got a big announcement today, which is you're joining something called Twitter Amplify. Tell us about it. Yeah, that's right. So um, we've been working with Twitter for some time, and Twitter have tested uh, this product they've got called Twitter Amplify uh, in the US, which has been a great success. So we, uh, we're very keen to, to work with them to launch it here in the UK, and we'll be hopefully launching it over the next uh, couple of months or so. But essentially what it is, it's allowing brands access uh, to uh, the Twitter sphere, if you like. So to give you an example, um, uh, if, um, let's say, Morrisons were sponsoring, uh, which they are, Britain's Got Talent, and there's a fantastic act or something that happened that's very, uh, that's very interesting and has a wide appeal, uh, we'll clip that very quickly, we'll serve it via Twitter, we'll go out on the Twitter feed, and that can be delivered by Morrisons. So Morrisons could put, have you seen this? Uh, isn't that a great act? They can have some sort of interaction with the audience via the Twitter feed. So it's really just extending um, a, uh, not only our ability to showcase little clips of our content, but also allowing the advertisers to be part of that conversation. Is there a, is there a danger of, uh, Martin Sorrell always goes on about how mm -hmm. viewers don't like sort of brands interrupting their social media experience. Is there, is there a danger that ITV, BGT fans will go, hang on a minute, what's Morrison's doing in my Twitter feed? You know, I, I Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. And it goes back to the session we had this morning. It has to be relevant. So in that instance, I'm using Morrison's because that they are the sponsors of BGT. And even back necessarily, next week, BGT. Back next week. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be them. I mean, it has to be relevant. It has to be uh, nicely curated, nicely done, which is why we've taken a few months uh, to work with Twitter on what's right and what's wrong and understand uh, that ecosphere, if you like, to make sure that any communication doesn't jolt or jar and not just putting the brand there for the sake of it, it actually has to provide a benefit. You know, some harsh words today for, uh, for, for brands who consider themselves content companies or, or media companies and want to create their own content. Yeah. You said, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, someone else raised the bar to 99.9%. .9%. To be fair to you, you said 90% of content is crap. Yeah, no, well, no, yes, yes, it is. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to go into whether it's 99 or 90% of it is crap. But I think one needs to be careful in this world of anybody can produce content. Everybody's got a video camera now. Everybody's got a mini studio. And everybody thinks they can produce content. Actually the game is producing great content. And that's fabulously difficult, really difficult. I mean, we've been trying to do it for, well, we've been doing it for 57 years and we get it wrong. We pay billions of pounds a year to get that content right. So for a brand just to leap in and go, actually, I can do content now, here it is, it's great, isn't it? No, actually, you have to be really, really, really good at it. And there's a warning sign to numerous brands out there for all the great successes we can name, uh, Nike, Red Bull, uh, a bit of Guinness, um, the first kiss that came out uh, recently. For those sort of four or five brilliant examples, actually there are millions of examples of appallingly produced content by people who think they can do it. Uh, so be careful. It's, it's just a warning.